In the city of Oakland, a clear but often unacknowledged social divide between the wealthy and the impoverished exists. Those at the bottom dream of landing jobs that'll take them up the ladder, even though what they'll see at the top isn't what they expect. Inside Mr. Anderson's Regal View telemarketing office, Cash sits on a chair, nervously holding an Employee of the Month plaque. After reading Cash's resume, Mr. Anderson mentions Cash's employment history as a restaurant manager and a bank teller, where he was Employee of the Month. Cash shows him a championship trophy from high school moot court. All of a sudden, Mr. Anderson drops the facade and tells Cash he knows he lied on his resume. The reference number he gave is his friend Sal's, an employee at Regal View. Cash admits he lied because he really needs a job. Anderson tells Cash the fact that he went through all that trouble tells him Cash has initiative. He hires Cash and tells him the company motto, Stus, or stick to the script. The next morning, Cash confines in his fiance, Detroit, his existential dilemma that nothing he's doing now will matter in a hundred years. Detroit gets dressed for work while Cash watches a worry-free commercial on TV. The commercial shows employees, guaranteed a lifetime contract, working and living in the facility. Minutes later, Cash's uncle, Sergio, reminds him to pay his four months late rent. On his way to work, he drives his old car through the impoverished parts of Oakland. Then, he arrives in his office building in the nice part of the city. While entering the building, Cash sees a golden elevator and a man in an expensive suit. In the telemarketer's area, Cash sees several pictures of a man named Hal showing the progression of his success within the company. Cash's supervisor, Johnny, encourages him to work hard to become a power caller. These employees work on the top floors and earn very well. After Johnny leaves, Cash puts up a picture of a man beside a car. He makes his first call and is transported in his mind to that man's dining table where the man quickly ends the call. The next call he makes is to a woman who is preoccupied at the moment and ends Cash's call. Cash's third call is to an old woman who tells him politely that she has no money due to her husband's illness. Cash sees a poster reminding him to stick to the script, but the moment the woman realizes he's still trying to make a sale, she hangs up. That evening at a bar, Cash tells Sal he feels incompetent at the job and feels awful for what he has to do to make sales. After several weeks, Cash's co-worker, Langston, gives him a tip on how to make sales. He tells Cash to use his white voice. He explains that using a white voice and giving it a casual tone instead of a desperate one makes all the difference. During a meeting, a new team leader, Diana, is introduced. She says she sees the employees as team members and not as workers. Cash asks her if that means they'll get paid more, but Diana says no. Squeeze, another telemarketer, looks at Cash curiously. Later that day, Squeeze introduces himself to Cash and asks him if he'd like to start a union. He invites Cash for drinks after work to discuss it further. That evening, Cash picks Detroit up from her sign spinner job. Cash tells Squeeze that Detroit is a visual and performing artist who's about to open her first show. Detroit tells a story about Cash in high school, but Cash stops her. He points to their high school's football team who he says are stuck in their lives and he doesn't want to be like them. In the bar, the TV shows a news report of protesters, with black marks under their left eye, outside the worry-free headquarters. The protesters, the left eye faction, call the company's lifetime contracts inhumane. The worry-free CEO, Steve Lift, is interviewed and dispels the rumors. At their table, Cash proposes a toast using his white voice, surprising his friends. Squeeze believes all employees need to get paid and gives each of them a pamphlet about unionizing. The next morning, Cash and Detroit see Sergio fixing his car. Cash tells him he'll pay him on Friday, but Sergio says he owes the bank too much money. He tells Cash to start looking for a new place because he's thinking of working for Worry Free. Cash and Detroit promise him they'll help pay his debts. At work, Cash is doing well since he's utilizing his white voice. Johnny tells him people are talking about moving him up to Power Caller. Sal tells Cash that Johnny told him the same thing three months ago. Unexpectedly, Detroit pops out from the other cubicle to join the conversation and puts on her headset. At the bar that evening, Squeeze shows Cash a newspaper headline, saying the Senate has absolved worry free of any inhumane workplace charges. On the TV, a show involving people getting beat up is on. He can't believe it's the most popular show in the country. Squeeze excuses himself as Cash and Langston have a conversation about power callers. Cash asks Langston how power callers make the money they do, and Langston tells him it's because they're selling something different. The next day, Squeeze talks to a group of Regal View employees outside the building. He plans to leave a 20-minute work stoppage during prime calling time to announce their union. 
When Cash enters the building, he stares at the golden elevator and sees the man in a suit wearing an eye patch. Later that day, Squeeze stands up in his cubicle, starting the work stoppage. The employees raise their hands in the air and chant a cry of rebellion. The man in the picture has his arm raised so Cash does the same and joins in the chanting. Later, in Anderson's office, Cash thinks he's getting fired, but he gets promoted to power caller instead. The following day, Diana greets Cash by the golden elevator. Diana pushes a complicated code on a keypad. Then, a voice in the elevator gives Cash a personalized greeting. When the elevator opens, Cash is greeted by the man with the eye patch, Mr. Blank, using his white voice. He explains that power callers sell firepower and manpower. They make sales pitches for US weapons manufacturers to other countries. He also reveals that Worry Free is their biggest client, since they sell cheap labor. Elsewhere, Detroit spray paints graffiti over a Worry Free ad and proclaims it's for the left eye faction. Back in the power caller floor, Mr. Blank tells Cash that Worry Free employees, under lifetime contracts, manufacture cars at the same cost as other workers making a bicycle. Cash expresses his self-doubt at being able to do the job. The man reminds him to only use his white voice at all times. He shows Cash the starting salary and Cash reverts to his white voice, smiling. While Detroit is working, Squeeze stops by and shows her his sign spinning moves. He then asks her how her relationship with Cash works, since she's a radical while he isn't. She likes Cash because he's real and doesn't like the haughty art scene. Squeeze asks if she needs a ride, but she declines because Cash is picking her up. That evening, Cash is late, so Detroit's friend picks her up instead. Later that night, Cash drives to Detroit's gallery, and she asks why he didn't pick her up. He tells her about the promotion and she asks what they sell up there, but he changes the topic. The next morning, the unionizers spot Cash in an expensive suit. He tells them about the promotion, and he needs the job to help his uncle. However, he promises that he'll still support their cause. Sal calls him a sellout, and they get into an argument which Langston stops. Inside the elevator, the voice greets him with a strange sexual message. In Cash's office, Mr. Blank says he's been assigned a worry-free campaign. When Mr. Blank leaves, Cash puts the picture of the man on his wall. He puts on his earpiece, reads the client's background, and calls him. When Mr. Yoshi's son answers the phone, Cash is transported to Mr. Sun's bathroom. He uses his white voice and compliments Mr. Sun using the background information. He goes into a sales pitch of worry-free workers providing twice the productivity at half the cost. After the call, Mr. Blank congratulates Cash on the successful campaign. They step away from the crowd and Cash asks for a salary advance. Cash goes home, hands Sergio a check, and leaves in his old car. Moments later, Cash picks Detroit up in a new car. Weeks later, Cash wakes up next to a sleeping Detroit in a fully furnished apartment. He turns the TV on and watches a news report of Regal View employees protesting. Squeeze addresses a crowd of hundreds of protesters. As they protest, riot police escort power callers into the building. Cash turns the TV off and greets Detroit good morning with his white voice. Detroit tells him to stop doing it. She quit working in Regal View because being with him made it awkward for her. She thinks his job is morally emaciated and what he sells is inhumane. He says the strikes aren't doing anything about larger scale labor practice problems and neither will her art. She says his job changed him, and if he crosses the picket line to go to work, their relationship is over. Outside the Regal View building, Cash and the other power callers are escorted by riot police into the building. In Cash's office, the man in the picture gives him a thumbs down. After work, he drives by the gallery then continues to his apartment, where he sleeps alone. The next day, Cash is hit on the forehead with a soda can hurled by a protester. In his office, Mr. Blank invites Cash to Steve Lift's party. Cash says he'll be there after he drops by Detroit's gallery. At Detroit's gallery opening, she walks over to Cash, who tells her he can only stay for a bit. Squeeze and Sal arrive, interrupting the conversation. Detroit leaves to prepare for her performance. Sal shows Cash the viral video of him getting hit on the head with a soda can. Squeeze says Cash can still help the protesters by flipping sides. Before Cash can answer, they hear Detroit's performance starting. Detroit uses her white voice and tells the guests to throw objects at her as she recites movie lines. She takes off her coat to reveal three strategically placed black gloves. In the middle of the performance, Cash steps in and asks her why she'd subject herself to this, and she says she's just sticking to the script. Detroit tells him to leave and he goes to the party. At the party, Mr. Blank introduces Cash to Steve, and the CEO compliments Cash about his meteoric rise at Regal View. Back at Detroit's gallery, the guests are gone, but Squeeze stays behind and Detroit kisses him. At the party, Steve tells Cash to drop the white voice and pressures him to rap even if Cash says he can't. Moments later, Cash stands on the staircase holding a microphone. A beat plays, and he starts off rough. 
Cash looks at the mostly white crowd and freestyle raps using racially charged language that the crowd eats up and has no problem repeating. Later, Cash sits in the piano room as partygoers engage in debauchery. Mr. Blank enters and tells him to go to Steve's office. Inside the office, Steve offers Cash some substance which Cash inhales. Steve wants Cash to work for Worry Free, and he plays a video proposal. Cash has to use the bathroom, so Steve tells him it's behind the jade door. Cash opens the jade door into a tiled room with only one stall. The man inside the stall asks for help, saying he's hurt. When the stall door opens, an unclothed man-horse hybrid falls to the floor. The creature has shackles on its wrists and begs Cash for help. Frightened, Cash backs away from the creature, but then two more pop out behind shower curtains. Cash fearfully runs out into the hallway where he sees Steve holding a gun. Steve tells Cash he entered the wrong door and to go back to his office where he'll explain everything. In the office, Steve plays the video proposal to shareholders about how worry-free scientists have developed a worker modification process that turns humans into equisapiens. Equisapiens are stronger and cheaper than human workers. The modification process starts when a human inhales a substance or fusing catalyst. Cash panics and asks Steve what the substance he inhaled was. Steve assures him it wasn't a fusing catalyst since he'd never give him any without consent. When Cash calms down, Steve starts his proposal. In the future, when the company has made millions of Equisapiens, the risk of them staging a rebellion becomes bigger. The company wants to integrate an inside man into the Equisapien workforce, one that the company can control. Steve wants Cash to be the inside man and will pay him $100 million for a five-year contract job, after which Cash gets the antidote to return to normal. Cash doesn't believe the antidote is real, but Steve promises him it is, and adds that Cash's manhood will be as big as a horse's. Back in his apartment, Cash calls a journalist from a local newspaper. He tells him everything he discovered, but the journalist hangs up. In the doctor's waiting room, the TV shows the woman who pelted the soda can at Cash getting soda endorsements. Cash's identity has also been revealed. Inside the doctor's office, he pulls down his pants and asks if his manhood looks bigger. Back in his apartment, Detroit tells him his manhood is the same size. She then says he sent her a video message that she hasn't seen yet. Cash says that he lost his phone, so it wasn't him who sent it. They watch a video from the Equisapiens saying they're in pain. Then, human employees quarrel the creatures and Steve appears, threatening to turn them into glue if they don't cooperate. Later that day, Cash breaks down on the sidewalk, afraid that he might turn into an Equisapien. Then, he asks Detroit to check if his nostrils are flaring. That evening, Cash vows that he'll never be a power caller. He now knows that Worry Free and Regal View only see him as a person they can control and manipulate. Detroit admits to hooking up with someone else last night, but Cash doesn't want to know who it was. Later, Detroit and other activists put up an art piece of a horse and a man with Worry Free is turning workers into horses written on it. The next day, a man recognizes Cash from the viral video and throws a drink at him. That night, Cash calls up the most popular show in America and tells them he'll be on tomorrow. The next day, Cash appears on the show, but they only agree to play the video if he gets beat up and goes into a tank of excrement. After Cash does what the show wants, they air the video of the Equisapiens. Over the next 24 hours, Cash does several TV interviews regarding Worry Free's practices. He realizes the video had the opposite reaction than expected. People are lauding Worry Free CEO and scientists for their scientific discoveries, and the company's stocks skyrocket. Later, Cash meets up with Sal and Squeeze and says he can't believe nobody cares about what Worry Free is doing. He plans to not let the power callers cross the picket line tomorrow. Later that day, he meets up with the high school football team. The next day, Cash copies the security code in the video and opens the gate to Steve's mansion. Later, the protesters place Detroit cement statues in front of the Regal View entrance. As the power callers prepare to enter the building with the riot police, the protesters wear soda can wigs and link arms. The guards beat the protesters out of the way, but collide with the cement statues and fall to the ground. The crowd clears, and the football team pushes the guards down. Cash appears behind the cement statues, blows a whistle, and cheers along with the crowd. All of a sudden, an armored vehicle carrying more riot police arrives and strikes the protesters. Detroit gestures the others to join her in hiding. Cash takes out his phone to record a video and blows on the whistle again, but then he's knocked out by the riot police. Moments later, Cash wakes up inside the armored vehicle with his hands tied. Through a peephole window, he sees another vehicle drive toward a crowd of people. A few seconds later, the vehicle is pushed back by the Equisapiens. They handily beat the riot police and open the vehicle doors to let Cash out. The Equisapiens thank Cash for helping them break out of Steve's mansion. After, they hear helicopters and leave the scene. Shortly after, Detroit and Cash share a kiss and Squeeze walks away. The next day, Cash gives Sal his new car and the two reconcile. The union has been established at Regal View, and Cash plans to go back to just being a telemarketer. As Sal leaves, Detroit arrives, and they enter the garage. While Cash closes the garage door, he cries in pain. 
covering his nose. He removes his hands and she sees his hoarse nostrils. Days later at Steve's mansion, he answers a video call from his gate, and a fully Equisapien cache introduces himself. The Equisapiens destroy the gate and the alarms go off. Steve sits frozen on his couch as Cash kicks the door open and roars. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.